Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Oh my goodness, I can tell from the brightness. I'm coming to you from our heat wave. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's been hot. I just have to sit up really straight so I don't have to squint into the sun. Excuse my dishevelled state. I don't think many of us have slept much in the last few days. Um, my flat has been getting well over. Oh well, I won't even go there. It's hot. It's been really hot. Uh, so I've had this lovely visit with my sister. She's gone back home now. And on her last day, we spent a lovely day in the garden with her cousin-in-law as well, having a beautiful picnic, gorgeous food. But honestly, it was so hot, even in the shade. We were all a bit <laughs> wilting. I walked my sister to the train station, saw her off, came back to the garden and watered. And um, I felt ill. It was uh, it was weird. I'm normally okay in in heat, but oh, I felt sort of sick and headachey. And I thought, oh no, you've got to get home. You've got to get home. It was about sort of five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, anyway, so. <laughs> today it's silly o'clock it's just gone 6 30 and I thought the only way to get anything done in the garden I'm gonna to have to come early to try and beat the heat but even so I can feel that heat already my goodness me so ostensibly I've come to water and I thought I'll just I'll see how it feels and see if I can get a few little bits and bobs of jobs done as well because that'd be really handy if I can um, because today we're due to get up to, what did I, uh, 38 I think was the latest I saw, which is 76 plus 30, 106 Fahrenheit. That's not gardening weather. It's not, it's not doing anything weather. I'm so torn though because I think, well, my flat gets really hot and stuffy. So I might as well be in the garden doing something being hot but actually, at least in the flat, I'm not in the direct sunlight because, of course, in my garden, it's completely exposed. I don't have any shade in the garden itself. The shade at the shed end from bits and bobs of trees. So anyway, yes, that's the plan. I've missed so many days in the garden in July. Um, as I was mentioning in the last video, that's OK. I've got my morning voice on. <laughs> It's okay because, generally speaking, most of the work is, it's not urgent, it's most of the tinkering stuff, like sort of tying in, pinching out, that sort of thing, thinning. Um, it's not like there's a desperate urgency to get things planted or harvested. <sighs> Saying that, I really do need get, to get those onions lifted. Um, That, sorry, my, my mind's wondering, I'm just, there's loads of people turning up on site this morning to water early before the heat, yeah, there's no desperate hurry to get them lifted, however we do rain over the weekend, so I'm really torn about do I try and get them lifted today ahead of the rain or say, oh stuff it, they're going to get a bit wet over the weekend, but all of next week we're dry again, do you know what, I'm going to be sensible, I'm going to leave them, um, yes, they are going to get wet this weekend, but to be honest, we're so warm and dry again next week, it won't be an issue. And like I said, I can feel the heat of today already, so rather than, you know, do anything too physical this morning, I'll leave it. I don't want to make myself ill. I hope you are all managing. Uh, I hope, I hope basically you're not having the same kind of heat that we are, but I know for some of you this is normal and you think, oh, shut up whinging about it, <laughs> you little lily-livered Brit. <laughs> I know, I know, um, but it's just, we're just not used to it, you know. Summer for us is, a, a decent summer's day is about 25 degrees, which would be 80. That's plenty, thank you very much. <sighs> Right, well I think, first things first, I'm going to get the water on because if I do nothing else this morning, that's the one thing I do want to do. So come on, 
let's go and start lugging some watering cans. Morning, Poppy. Hello, sweetheart. Are you hot already? Mm. Come on, let's go have a cuddle. getting hotter by the minute. It's about 8.30. It's 30 degrees already. Beautiful morning. The garden takes on such, such a different quality first thing in the morning. Um, I really should try to get down here earlier more often. So, because we're due this rain over the weekend, about 48 hours of it, so they say. <clears throat> I thought I'd better grab my broad beans. This is my seed saving. So if you remember, this bed was emptied all oh, about the middle of June. And I left, what was it, three, four plants for seed saving. So they're pretty dry. Pretty dry and rattly. Um, and I just thought, you know what, if we, if we really do get this soaking at the weekend, I don't want to risk them going a bit musty. So, have them out today. It's not, a, uh, it's not an exhausting job to do in this heat. I say that, I've got beads of sweat running down my nose. I'm such a sweaty girl. Ay, caramba. Yeah, might as well have 
have them out. Oh, they're desperate to come out. Ah, uh, yeah. Looks like I've lost a couple. Where they've been touching the ground. Looks like they've got a bit damp. Looks like they've had a bit of a nibble. But we'll see if there's anything in there that's rescuable. Uh, I want to take them back to the shed in a moment to pod. Yay. Or possibly. Possibly. Oh. And then it's definitely going to be time for a slug of very, very cold water. <laughs> I don't normally, um, I don't normally drink my water really, really cold. Uh, but <laughs> days like today, yes, icy would be lovely. Oh, you can hear how dry they are, can't you? So when I saved these, I didn't actually count before I decided which ones to save. So I'm just hoping <clears throat> that doing it by sight, I have I have managed to. Oh, it's been proper attack. Yeah, hopefully I've managed to save enough for about 80 seeds. That's what I would ideally like to sow again this October. It's crazy and it, here I am sweltering in high summer and where are we? So August, September, October. It's only going to be 10 weeks before I start doing my winter sowings here. Bonkers. Bonkers, bonkers, bonkers. Right, that's it. Let's go get these podded and see how many I've got. But first of all, I'm going to go to our tap to get a load more water. I won't be out here much longer today, but please, please, if it's this hot where you are, if you're sweating as much as me, you're so unladylike. You see, I've kind of semi-back lit myself so you can't see all my sweat, but yeah, please remember to keep topped up with your fluids. Oh, it's better. Just fat myself. Oh, I don't want to knock it. <clears throat> a little shady spot outside my shed. Um, <clears throat> this is Svetlana's uh, fruit trees. Perfect little bit of shade at this time of day. So, no idea what to expect. I'm just going to get them all podded. <clears throat> then I'll have a, um, once I get home, I'll have a proper look through and sort just to sort of inspect them, make sure that they don't look damaged or wrong in any way. So this is my Aquadulce Super. No, <laughs> I'm lying. This is my Super Aquadulce. Let me see if I can show you briefly. Beautiful little beans. Uh, I mentioned it when I was harvesting, um, so I always sow an autumn broad bean in order to get an earlier harvest in order to therefore use that space again for a follow-on crop, so I'm getting two crops out of one bed. And the pattern I've got into over the last, I think it's probably about three years now, oh, so I'm so sweaty, is the broad beans and then I follow them with the coco de pampol. Um, so when you're doing an autumn sowing, autumn sowing of your broad beans you need to make sure that it's one that's suitable for autumn sowing and the most common one is Aquadulce Claudia which is what I've used for years and I did some of them this year because that was my saved seed from last year of course that's what I grow that's what I saved the seed of however this year or oh, sorry last year at seed sowing time someone gave me a handful of this variety called Super Aquadulce. So it's obviously the same family as the Aquadulce Claudia, but I found that generally each pod uh, was about two beans longer. So for the same amount of space in the garden, imagine two extra beans per pod. Let's imagine there are 10 pods per plant. That means each plant is giving me 20 extra beans for the same amount of space. So yeah, well worth it, give it a go. I was really delighted. 
you know, not every single pod um, was that big. But then saying that, you know, with my aqueduct cordia, some of the pods aren't that big. So I, th I think on average, it's probably a good couple of beans extra. So that's when I was setting aside the beans to save this year. Um, I hope I haven't cooked my own goose, but all I've done is save the super aqua dolce. Hope they come good for me next year. And it does seem crazy. Oh, that's a beautiful breeze. Oh, I needed that. I'm so sweaty. I need the breeze to help me kind of evaporate. <laughs> I don't want to evaporate completely. Yeah, um, it, it, it does seem crazy to be, you know, thinking about the winter garden already. I do not want to wish time away, not by any means, but over the next couple of weeks, got to get the onions out. What else is coming out? The last of the peas, the lentils, what have you. They all need to come out to make way for me to get my brassicas in. Yay! Um, anyway, that's for next week. Just to say with these seeds, they are, they do feel really, really pretty dry. But just to be absolutely on the safe side, I'll take them home, spread them out in a single layer on a tray. My flat is so warm at the moment. It's boiling. So I'll just leave them out on a tray for a few days to make sure they're absolutely bone dry. And then I'm going to try the method the Kawanga Institute in New Zealand use. I've mentioned it a few times already, but it's it's new to me to try this year. Um, and something I'll probably do with pretty much all my save seeds. Once they are absolutely bone dry, I'll pop them in an airtight container, just the little jam jars I do my seed saving in. Pop those in the freezer for three days. And that just means that any little bug that got in there gets frozen so it won't hatch um, before I have a chance to sow the seed. So I'll be doing that with both beans I'm saving for seed and those that I'm saving to eat. So for example, let me just show you, you can see where it's gone in. Oh, this one's really clear. Can you close up? Can you see that? Oh yeah, you can, can't you? Mega hole. So <clears throat> that, sh that shouldn't affect me being able to sow the seed. Wouldn't affect me eating it. What's not nice though is, is if you've got a whole jar of saved beans, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced it in the past, you've got all your jars of dried beans for eating. You go into the larder or the pantry one day to get some beans off the shelf and you look into the jar and all you can see is the little bugs hop, hop, hopping, hopping around in there. It's not pleasant at all. So yeah, I'm gonna try the Koanga Institute three day freeze technique because if it's, if it's good enough for them with their precious, precious, precious heritage seed collections, well, you know what? It's good enough for me. Whew. What I might actually do, <clears throat> I might take the beans at home to pod it is getting quite warm and there are a couple of other quick little jobs I'd like to do this morning before I go um, yeah I'll do that I'll take these home come on let's do a couple more little jobs in the garden before we scotch <laughs> okay so I'd like to do a little bit of planting just in what's supposed to be a gap here at the bottom of the Taunton Dean but the Taunton Dean's turned into a monster it's fantastic um, partly because I just haven't kept an eye on it to harvest so in fact I'm going to have a load away today I think it's partly because I sort of don't think of I don't think of eating brassicas at this time of year and it is so hot I'm, I don't think I'm sort of awkward wanting to cook particularly or certainly not have hot food like like Kale. So I think what I'm going to do today is get it home, get it frozen, use it in the winter. Uh, having not had a Taunton Dean before, um, I 
sort of wasn't sure when when to harvest really but you know looking at it now well there's, there's loads to come off beautiful look at the color of the stem isn't that gorgeous you may not be able to pick it up in this light i think this light is so strong it's bleaching everything out right that's given me a little bit of space down here um oh we need to trim the grass a bit everything's a bit overgrown because it's been so covered so let me bring you down and show you what i'm going to plant well this is a cozy little corner isn't it so i've got my couple of leftover squash I don't know if you remember when I was doing my replacements, um, I did need to use quite a few of my backup, excuse me, sweaty nose again. But I had these two left over and I kept hold of them just in case I lost some that I'd put out to slugs or what have you again. So I've got a Waltham, which is like a sort of a bog standard butternut. And I've got a cream of the crop. They're going mad in, uh, in the cathedral bed, absolutely bonkers. So, I don't know if they're going to come to anything, but put it this way, they certainly won't come to anything in their pots, will they? So they might as well go in. Um, what I'll do is, as they get going, I'll put, um, I'll put some sticks in to encourage them to go and find the fence. And then hopefully what I can do is get them going either side of the achocha, which is there, which is producing its little gourds, it hasn't been anywhere near as rampant as the one I had last year, nor, oh my goodness, that needs to go in, nor anywhere near as rampant as the one that I direct sowed. So, yeah, it's, um, it's giving me food for thought for next year. This ground, despite being in a slightly shadier corner, it's bone dry, absolutely bone dry. I think it's partly also because obviously the Taunton Dean leaves have been covering the ground so the rain hasn't necessarily been getting to it. But I've got, um, I'm going to use some water butt water for these today. It, my water butt is, is pretty full actually, it's amazing. We had rain about, what day is it today? I don't know whether it's Thursday or Friday, but we had rain a week ago, a whole night of rain, sorry, excuse me, I'm so hot, uh, and that water bottle filled completely. So in general, I've been using it for the blueberries, to water the blueberries, because they prefer rainwater, but there's so much of it, I'm gonna give these a good soaking with it. In fact, let's do that right now. Oh, if I can get up, it's <laughs> cramped a little space. <clears throat> One of the other reasons for getting them into the ground is that, you know, I know we are due rain this weekend, which would be fantastic, but then we're due to go really dry again. And it's, you know, there are days when I just can't get here, I just can't get here to water. So at least if they're in the ground, they've got half a chance of wiggling their little roots down and actually finding some water. Just while we're down the back here, I thought I'd show you how the grapevine's getting on. See, it's definitely life there. It's not huge, can I show you its tip? Look, it's only about 18 inches long, but that's fab. I'm so delighted to see that. And now that it's had a bit of growing this year, hopefully next year it'll, um, it'll really get growing and I can get it up the fence and who knows, maybe even along part of the wire. But yeah, I'm chuffed that that has worked. Yay! It's definitely a game of patience though, isn't it? Right then, one more last little job this morning. Um, again, for the same reason as with the squash, there's no point leaving things in pots, they won't grow in pots. And also, wow, they're going to just dry out so badly. So. I'm just making a little spot behind the French lavender here for my gorgeous a mountain tea, ironwort steratus, that Paul grew from seed, 
if you remember he gave me a load of seed too he sowed a load and between us this was the only one that worked some lovely roots on there so goodness me this is precious uh, such such a kind gift my goodness me so yeah pop that in there now although it's it would normally grow on pretty arid mountain sides I am going to give it a really good drink in because well I don't want to kill it with the shock of transplanting it it is really really precious like I say I am going to try again next year I'd love a whole chunk of mountain tea in here somewhere not sure where I'll put it I might take something else out I'm not sure yet but there we go happy to find its new home and I can't wait if it works to have my very first cup of homegrown mountain tea yay gosh it's definitely time to skedaddle I don't know what the time is I think it's gone nine it's really really hot already it's blooming gorgeous I love it um, I'd love to just sit here all day, snoozing, a bit of shade from the Tansy, hello Tansy. Um, yeah, I could happily sit here all day, snooze a bit, read a bit, but I've had a lot of days off in July in terms of, you know, being with my mum, my great aunt, my sister, friends, what have you, what have you, so I really need to catch up on some work. I would prefer it if that work that I was catching up on is here in the garden. <sighs> <laughs> but uh, look, you, you have to be sensible when it's like this. I know there's a lot of you who live in places where it, it, it's this hot regularly and you adjust your work so that you're, you're doing your garden work first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening and then other stuff during the day. Excuse me, I need to wipe with my gloves. Thank goodness they've got a slightly absorbent back. Um, so yes, I'm going to do likewise. I've had a lovely sort of two and a half, three hours down here this morning. Absolutely beautiful. There have been quite a lot of other pot holders around also with the same idea of trying to beat the heat today, do some watering, do some bits and bobs. There really has been a beautiful quality to the light, to the sound. It's just been utterly magical. But it's time to be sensible now. Go home and do work indoors. I see how the temperature is this evening and maybe I'll hop down here not necessarily to water but maybe just to sit and enjoy oh I'd like to let now all the bees so I'm going to leave you now with a few little images from around the garden this morning in the beautiful light the beautiful peace and quiet so sit back enjoy have a bit of a meditation on it if you like go a bit more slowly. I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, especially in this heat. Just go a little bit slower and uh, slap, lap it up. It'll be winter before we know it. <laughs> Cheerio, everyone.